Now we know more about learning to read. Now what? Up to now, we focused on phonology, meaning, orthographic representation, and automatization as important skills for learning to read and write. We focus on these for three main reasons. The first reason is that these skills are useful for screening for reading problems. The second reason is that teaching these skills can enhance reading and writing. The third reason is that it is important to understand which of these skills are easy and difficult for each child. A child might be strong in some skills and weak in others. Screening for reading problems. In every language and script, these four abilities can be tested. For example, phonological awareness is easy to test in a conversation with children. As discussed in Module 3, we can test phonological awareness by asking children to say a word with a sound removed. I could ask a child to say bat without the b sound or plaque without the l sound. The child should say that bat without the b sound is at, plaque without the l sound is pack. Do not forget, please do not get confused by the spelling. This kind of test is done only by talking to the child. It does not involve reading or writing. If a child can do this with different sounds and different words, she may be considered to be relatively good at phonological awareness. If a child has trouble with this kind of activity, she may be relatively poor at phonological awareness. It is important to test phonological awareness in children who might have reading difficulties. Tests of phonological awareness have been created in languages as diverse as Chinese, Korean, Arabic, Spanish, Dutch, Bemba, Cebuano, German, Greek, and many more. Tests of the other three skills are also important. Tests of meaning, or morphological awareness, are relatively common around the world. Tests of orthographic representation are also common. Finally, tests of automatization are important and easy to create. Hopefully, you will make more of these. These tests of phonology, meaning, orthographic representation, and automatization can be made even for young children. All of these tests can help teachers and parents to understand whether the child is at risk for reading problems. This is true for all children reading any script worldwide. Teaching for better reading and writing. A second reason for highlighting these skills is training. We want to know very early whether the child may be at risk for reading difficulties. Once we know this, we can start to teach the child reading-related skills. This can happen even before he or she begins to read. This is very helpful because we can even try to prevent reading difficulties this way. We can start to solve the problem before it starts. We do this by training the child in skills that he or she has specific difficulties with. Once we know what these skills are and why they are important, we can also try to teach them. For example, imagine a child who has trouble learning how to break sounds apart. A little girl cannot say bat without the b sound. We can teach her to focus on easier speech sounds by explaining how sounds can be put together and pulled apart. In every language, it makes sense to focus on how to put together or pull apart syllables. For example, in the words papa or mama, we could ask children to say just the first syllable, which would be pa or ma only. We could practice clapping to show how many syllables there are in the word papa. We could move on to other words with two syllables to see if children could understand how they can be divided. The easiest way to do this is with compound words. In compound words, each syllable is also a short word. Examples include football, lifetime, or goldfish. 
When children are taught to take one word away and see which word is left, they are learning something about sound as well as meaning. First, children learn to take big sounds away from bigger words. Then they learn to take small sounds away, such as bat without the b sound over time. As discussed in module three, it is important to know that training children on how to play with speech sounds helps them to learn to read. In this MOOC, we gave many tips for activities that boost children's skills in orthographic representation, module two, phonology, module three, and meaning, module four. Feel free to go back and review these different activities in your own time. Identifying strengths and weaknesses. A third reason to focus on these skills is that children may have a set of strengths and weaknesses across the four. They may have difficulties with some, and they might be good at others, which are strengths. If children are especially good at some of the skills, this can help the children to make up for their weaknesses in others. For example, if a child is unable to sound out a word because his phonological awareness skills are poor, he may be better in orthographic representation. Maybe he can picture the word in his head. When he looks at words on a page and recognizes them because he has good memorization skills, this may help him to read better. These four skills are important both as weaknesses to be identified and trained, and also as strengths to be used to make up for other difficulties. Putting them all together. It is important to remember that all of these skills strengthen each other. They are not learned by themselves. They are usually all helpful together when we read and spell. For example, Knowing what a word means in spoken language can help children spell I when talking about the first person, and I when talking about what we use to see things. At the same time, EYE -E is a strange way of representing what the word sounds like. The way it is written as EYE -E is unusual in English. Children need to be taught what this word looks like in its written form. As discussed in Module 2, it is important to help children with their orthographic processing skills. In some languages, spelling is easy. In these languages, you can write most words correctly by thinking about the letters and sounds that make up a word, as long as you know the basic letter-sound correspondences in that particular language. In Filipino, children can probably spell a word like magiliu just by hearing it. This is true even if they do not know what it means or have never seen it written down before. But if the child already knows what a word means and looks like, then a child can spell this word faster because of automatization. German and Spanish are also quite easy to learn to spell. In other languages and scripts, spelling is more difficult. English is very hard to spell. In other scripts such as Chinese, Arabic, and Canada, visual aspects of writing are more difficult than alphabetic scripts. Writing words in these scripts may take longer than in German or Spanish for this reason. Summary. To summarize, it is important to focus on understanding the four major skills involved in word reading in all languages. These are phonology, meaning, orthographic representation, and automatization. Unlike vocabulary skills, which are also important for learning to read, these four may be new to you unless you have taken teacher training or linguistics courses before. This is why it is important to review and reinforce learning of each. All four skills can be helpful when thinking about what words are easier or more difficult to learn, or what rules of language could be taught to make this process easier and faster for your students. Please think about how each of these components work together in the specific script that you're working with. Knowing what these skills are and how to use them can directly help your students to learn to read.